So anyway, we want to just thank everybody for being here and for jumping in in this first ever club battles scenario where two clubs on chess.com will go head to head, battle it out, mono e mono, late, uh, uh, lady versus lady as well. I don't even know where, where the where the line is drawn there, but the Pro Chess League right now is really, really filling out. They've got a lot of good players jumping in to compete on behalf of their club. We'll keep track of the score. Uh, as well as the games, I will be your host. Hi, I'm Danny. Um, big fan of Brazil right here. Um, I'm going to be providing you with some educational analysis of the games live in progress. We're going to be seeing uh, who wins this matchup between the Pro Chess League and the Chess TV Club. This is the first of what will be a new monthly show on Chess.com, uh, Club Battles. And uh, if you want your club to be featured, send a message to JD Cannon. Uh, if you want your club to be featured, send a message to Brother Josh. Those are the two main guys who will kind of be telling me what to do. They're the boss. They say, Danny, this is what you're doing. I'm like, all right, whatever. Can I have a snack? And they're like, no, get on camera. And I'm like, fine. I haven't eaten all day. You know, they don't care about me or about my meal schedule. You know, go figure. So um, thanks for being here, everybody. We need some more for Chess TV. If you're a title player seeing this show, go to chess.com. Sign up for the Chess TV group and then come register to the event. We need some more title players. Right now, the Pro Chess League is is outrating the the Chess TV group on about like it looks like 300 points on almost every board. So we have we have a, a big underdog in today's in today's matchup with Chess TV really being outrated here. So if you're a title player and you got nothing else to do, let's be honest, there's a pretty good chance of that. <laughs> Go go sign up and join. We've got like five minutes before the show starts. Believe it or not, I've only had three cups of coffee today. Hashtag shame on you, Dan. Why don't you go get yourself a fourth cup? Okay, I will. I'm going to go do that. Um, you can listen to the smooth sounds of the starting Zoom music, which really needs a facelift. It's like, are, are we getting ready to walk into a shady nightclub, or is this a chess show? Um, I don't know, but you decide.
everybody, we're back. I never left you in spirit. Right? I'll always be with you, Jack. I'll always be with you. Does anybody else think that our uh our starting music sounds like I I feel like Quentin Tarantino would dig it. It kind of sounds a little pulp fiction ish fiction ish. Like listen to this. I I can just picture John Travolta like walking and there's something some really shady stuff about to go down, right? All right, but we're about to get started here. If you're just jumping in, this is the first ever club battles we have. Uh, two clubs about to go at it. The Pro Chess League versus Chess.com TV. One of the uh, top players for the Pro Chess League just dropped out. That actually makes it a little bit more of a fair matchup. Uh, right now, the Pro Chess League is currently outrating, outranking the Chess TV players Um it's not it's not as top heavy as it was. The the it looks like we had a couple last minute signups for the chess.com TV group, which is sweet. Um, and that should make this even even more fun, more of a tight matchup. I'm going to be your host here to to analyze the games in progress, give some fun thoughts, um, answer questions in chat. Thanks for being here on Twitch and chess.com TV. If you have any questions about what this is, go ahead and keep it to yourself. Um, and uh, we're going to we're going to do this right now. The 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 tournament has started. Club battles have begun, but but how can I see the games? I mean, these games should be in progress, right? Apparently, I can't just click on the game here to see what's going on. That's not good. Uh, this is a new feature. We're working on it all the time. Going to make some improvements for sure before the next show, but you will see this show go down more. I think next one we'll do Grandmaster Simon Williams versus International Master Danny Wrench. Club Battle Royale. <sighs> you get what I'm talking about. I'm taking John Simon. Um, but it looks like the games have started. Apparently, the the uh, it's not just a, a one click, not just a one click for the for the games once they're active and live here, in um, in uh, on in in uh, in the chat. So I'm looking for exactly how to. How to deal with that right now? If you just if you just bear with me, so I can maybe what I'll do is I'll I'll click on this and I'll follow this guy um, so that I'm following his games. There we go. So he's rocking right now against Ninja Ninja um, Ninja Wiki Bear or whatever. I don't know why I just said Ninja Wiki Bear. That doesn't even make any sense. Um, so we've got one game that just started here, but I'm going to go back and let's also let's also follow the game here, currently going on um, between Dreaming Fly versus Queen Sheba. This is the board one matchup here between the Pro Chess League and the the Pro Chess League and the Chess.com TV group. So we'll keep we'll keep our eye our eye on what's going to happen here. Obviously, if Chess TV can pull some upsets, right? If Queen Sheba can take down Dreaming Fly. Or if Mr. Ninja Ninja Kiwi can take down Smarter Chess, this is a much closer match for for the Pro Chess League to to have a chance here. Um, because as I as I've shown, they're kind of outrated. In fact, we already have our first result that unfortunately I missed, where uh, your king took down Halvard. Oh, Halvard, I love you, bro. Uh, first time, long time follower of your chess, Halvard. First time admitter. Just kidding. I've never seen any of your games, but I think we've played. Um, any hooters. So, what else is going on here? We've got we've got this game here, but let's let's focus on on some of these top games for to start, and and see if we can see if we can uh, provide some instruction. So, what's going on in the Ninja Kiwi game? Unfortunately, um, okay, no, Ninja Kiwi did not just miss a chance to take and win a piece because there would have been a check in her Mizzo, um, highlighting the fact that in this position here, if if uh, white had taken here with the knight, there's not a discovery or win of the piece because black can take here with check. But what was the opening here? What can we learn? We had a, a French, smarter chess, playing the French, and then bishop to d3. Not the most common, dare I say, probably not the best approach for white. This tempo is okay when there's a knight recapturing, which is why you see the move three, knight to c3 as being so common. Um, 
But the bishop is just an immediate target, is it not? Although this is interesting. It makes me feel like this must be some line that I'm just not familiar with because the bishop does seem decently useful there. And certainly this knight's going to come around. But if black is going to get c5, which is the key in this sort of structure, whenever your opponent has the one lead pawn in the center, um, it's very common for black to try to liquidate that, make a trade, and liberate some of, uh, some of the pieces in the process. And that's exactly what... M, uh, Matt Jensen does here. Mr. Smarter Chess makes a smart move. Sorry, I was just I just auditioned for Shark Take. Hashtag cheesy on the brain. I got cheesy lines for days right now. Um, so this is this is okay. But again, like I would say that this looks to be either either this Bishop D3 line is some sort of special sauce I'm not aware of. But if I'm just evaluating this position unbiasedly, I feel like Black has equalized very quickly. Because this move c5, if you evaluate center pawns, right? If you ask Nimzovich to give an opinion, he would love black because black has more center pawns. And black has uh, decently active pieces. So a good start here for Mr. Jensen. Um, even with the liquidation of the pieces, you see this f pawn is probably going to regret extending. Uh, usually if you're, if you're launching the pawns on the king side, you want some sort of attack to go with it. Probably this might lead to just a, a bunch of weaknesses on the dark squares and nobody's, nobody's fan. All right, Queen Shiva, Queen Shiva, we're rooting for you to take down Dreaming Fly. I'm not trying to root against the Pro Chess League, but that's exactly what I'm trying to do. I'm rooting for the underdog here, Chess TV. What other games have gotten done? Just so you know, again, this is our first ever club battles. The Pro Chess League is taken on Chess TV. The Pro Chess League brought the big guns. Chess TV is outrated, and as you can see, they are losing currently by a score of 3-1. Three to, three to one. So let's um, let's go back to the... To the main standings here in the main game. Is, is Queen Shiva going to strike? Okay, so Queen Shiva is moving toward an end game with the bishop or the knight battle. Um, I don't think black is much worse, but black is definitely a little bit worse. And the reason is these doubled C pawns. The position, right? A positional chess. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, Alexander Golden, right? A uh, positional chess. A double Peshka. Peshka. I don't, you know, the double pawns on the C file. That's the translation of what I just said. I I do not like the queen side. Uh, yeah. All right. So um, if if black can organize the pieces in a way that prevents knight e four and just rook on the C file and getting jiggy with it, um, probably you know black and old. But but it seems like if white is really disciplined. This should be a two-result battle, meaning White is playing for a win, but can probably only draw, even if even if uh, Dreaming Fly messes up. Um, one of the really cool features that we should request, JD, please make a note of this, is during club battles, let's let everybody have like a pro chess league experience during club battles. It could it could also run that run a script where it shows their name and has like a little club logo. Right, so it shows what club they're playing for. If we're gonna do club battles and everyone's gonna jump on their favorite club and try to try to represent their team, it should show what club they're playing for right down here. That would be the bees. Um, all right, so white plays knight e2, which means white probably has an idea of playing d4. But you see, if d4 is played prematurely, okay. Now, if the bishop backs up or even to e7, keeping an eye on b4 so that white can't do this. Black is going to have a chance to trade off that weakness. So I actually don't like Dreaming Fly's plan. Queen Sheba makes the right decision. And I think that if she plays, assuming she's a lady, if she plays the move C5, she's exchanging off her biggest positional weakness. Um, and moving toward an endgame where I don't really think black is really any worse. Perhaps, perhaps white played the move Knight F4 so that C5 can be met with D5. But, um, but knight, knight to F4 can be met by a few things here. I guess the biggest issue, biggest issue here is that it looks like if you don't play c5 now, allowing d5, white's going to bring the pony to d3, which is going to put a clamp down on this square. Really good when you have a positional edge to not just focus on um, the most aggressive way to attack it, but to focus on the most precise way to prevent your opponent from liquidating that weakness, right? It's like when you play against an isolated queen pawn. We all know we want to attack the pawn. But most importantly, the, the strategy that's applied by people that prevents this isolated pawn from pushing, right? For those advanced players who know, like, the pawn wants to push. Or preventing that pawn from trading itself off in some sort of dynamic way. That's really one of the key things to strangling your opponent's weaknesses. 
um, is preventing them from liquidating it. Uh, yeah, no, I'm ha I've had enough coffee today. Don't worry. Thanks for asking, though. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hey there, Hom Viking in the Twitch chat. Dr. Usetic, what's up, dog? Sella Sel Bethel talking to Snazzy. What's up, peeps? Uh, let me go check on the Chess TV chat. But really, if we're looking at the standings here, I mean, honestly, this just looks... This just looks harsher and harsher in the direction of the Pro Chess League. So we're hopefully going to improve this. If we do the same matchup again, I'm going to play for Chess TV. I'm going to punch that bully in the mouth. Send the Pro Chess League pack in where it belongs, right? Stop, a, stop beating up on the Chess TV guys. But look for Halvard to get some revenge in the second round. My boy. Look for, uh, look for Rodrigo over here to rock, rock, some, rock some worlds. Like the little country girl he truly is inside. Don't worry, I know Rodrigo. It's not a big deal. We're buds. Um, but okay, let's let's go back to Ninja Kiwi's game. Is Ninja Ki Ninja Kiwi holding in there against Smarter Chess? Say what? Right? Yo, man, is that bruschetta you eating? Yo, dog, I loves me some bruschetta. Oh, snap. That's me talking about bruschetta in a rapper voice. You're welcome. Bruschetta. What's up, Hom Viking? Um, so no, but seriously, this is actually not the worst thing I've ever seen for Ninja Kiwi, given where they were at. Um, I liked, I liked Smarter Chess's approach out of the opening to play C5, as I said, but, you know, not a lot of pressure was, you know, delivered anything concrete. Now, I, I, I still think Black is better, because the B7 pawn notwithstanding, I mean, White has more targets to worry about. The A5 pawn, the open D file... Uh, the, the F4 pawn it being overextended, so I feel like this is. Oh, oh my gosh! I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong board. I'm sorry. I was talking about Matt Jensen's approach in the opening, saying I like this approach by Smarter Chess to liquidate, but that I didn't. Um, I I don't really feel like Black has gotten a ton, and, and and with that though, I said that Black is still better because the B7 pawn's a target, but White has more targets. The A5 pawn, the F4 pawn being extended, the D file. In fact, just for kicks and gigs, can white play the move queen? Can black play queen d1? No, because we go to chop town, chop town, prop town, boom town, and actually this is this is now a better rook ending for white because white's rook is uh, more accurately placed. Okay, but queen to c4 is a nice move, and be careful if you're if you're white here. There's there's all kinds of problems, right? We got 99 problems, and a back ring checkmate happens to be one of them. Um, you guys ever hear the rumor that Jay-Z, like, made up all his lyrics on the fly? That's got to be a total lie, right? Like, who does Jay-Z think he is, like, thinking he's the most bad, baddest freestyle rapper, yo? I still buy that. Anyway, um, so I, I think Jensen still goes on to win this game, despite the valiant efforts here by Ninja Kiwi. One of the biggest issues also is that the move Queen to F2 which seemingly takes care of all these 99 problems, as Jay-Z just said. Turns out it doesn't. Rook to d2, exclaim a viach, boom. Queen is now overloaded. The queen can't leave the rook behind, but wherever she goes, somebody is falling uh, falling down. So, all right, I, I just gave Matt Jensen the move, but let's be honest, nobody's watching Chess TV, or at least they shouldn't be. Um the, uh, yeah, okay, well, he finds Rook to D2, no surprise, and I think that, unfortunately, this is going to set the Pro Chess League further in the direction of winning, of winning the game. What is this? You just joined us and asked, uh, Mr. Teolite332. This is the first ever Club Battles. We are rolling on from the Pro Chess League into a new show we're going to be doing where one club on Chess.com takes on the other club at Chess.com. Their best players show up, and they throw down American Ninja Warrior style. Actually, that's not that accurate, because American Ninja Warrior style is a person against an obstacle course. So let's say this is more Dragon Ball Z style, battling against each other, uh, and, and that's what's happening here. Unfortunately for the Chess TV players, uh, they... What? They fought back. Okay, so Chess TV fell behind. They were down like 6-1 to one to start. Right now, the match score is 10-7. to seven. Uh, Because I'm only one man, I can't cover every game going on, unfortunately. But maybe what we need is somebody to kind of tell me, like, Oh, cool game alert. Go check out, you know, Buddha, Buddha Fanboy versus Bang V1s. Uh, uh, but right now, I've been focused on the... Um, 
I've been focused on the the top game here. Right now, it looks like Matt Jensen, Mr. Smarter Chess, is probably on his way to a victory against Ninja Kiwi. Um, we will see how this one plays out. Let's uh, let's check out the other game, of course. Okay, Queen Sheba is holding her own, but she's gonna lose. This is this is too many too many pawn weaknesses. So what happened after that critical moment? Because I was giving these philosophical takeaways about liquidating your weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, when you talk about the weaknesses, it's best to talk in a Hydra voice. Hydra, right? I mean, you know what I'm talking about, right? Uh, hashtag Captain America. Um, so c5 was played, here comes d5, and unfortunately that led to more isolated pawn problems, really. So as much as we liked this idea to try to liquidate, if d5 was possible, which we were saying might be the issue, you know, really, really, white was just better and in the driver's seat the whole time. You know, we talked about why, why white was better and playing for two results, for those of you who have been with us. And that was my theory, is black had too many weaknesses. And d5, of course, is a very good move. It leaves black suffering here with these positional problems. d5, knight takes d5, and just like this, FM Dreaming Fly goes on to take the victory. Now, one of the best parts about these club battles is once you're paired off against someone, the next game just starts instantaneously, right? No wait time, no downtime, right back into the game. And uh, Queen Shiva will now look for revenge with the white pieces against FM Dreaming Fly. Um, but but I, I would guess if we're going to go check on the standings, I would guess that puts us in a situation where the Pro Chess League is, is really um, sinking their teeth into this match. You know, and they should. As you see the ratings here, you know, the Pro Chess League showed up with more title players, really the only title players in the tournament. Um, and and they, they really, other you know, when you get down to the lower boards, it's a bit more of a wash. But if you look at the ratings of these players, really, you know, the Pro Chess League was was um, was really in the driver's seat on paper to start the match. So these are just fun, quick shows where we're going to pair off these teams, have some battles. As I said, next big club match, club battles show is going to be my club versus Simon Williams' club. Um, I don't even have a, I'm going I'm to make a club first. Then I'll do it. Um, all right, so Queen Shiva's going to look to strike back. Ninja Kiwi on the top board is is holding his own, but also likely to lose right now um, against Mr. Smarter Chess. So let's go down the list here, and let's get some other games. Um, we also have this game here going down between uh, Tevdor 2 versus Munster Chess, spelt like the Munster Cheese. That is... That is maybe one of the most creative things I've ever seen in my life. Okay? And I and I went and auditioned for Shark Tank. So I know creativity ideas, right? There were people there pitching t-shirts. Huh? Come on, sharks. You like there were there were these idiots there pitching a chess business. Say hey, what? But right, anyway, um the Wait, is this game two between these two dudes? Might be. Uh, they have a lot of time on the clock, so I'm going to guess that somebody took care of business very quickly, yeah? In the first one. Yeah. This is what happened here. Now we have the besieged, besieged. Con a piat. Must be protected, yeah? And la diase vosum. Ay, yeah, besieged, la diase vosum. Uh, attack, uh... Teshki, uh, Shipka, that is a mistake. Uh, pet pawns and pawn we I forgot how to say weaknesses, but these pawns are problematic. And the dark squares are representing a bit of a problem here for Black. If the pawn comes to d4, where is the queen going, yeah? I ask you this question and I have not the answer myself. Yeah, I, uh, will, uh, like, uh, monster chess to win this one with the monster cheese. Alright, what else is going on here? There's other games going. Rodrigo, say what? Let's follow Rodrigo. He's my boy. Did you know, you want to know who Rodrigo is? Rodrigo is one of my favorite team members. He is one of the lead developers for ChessKid.com. Rodrigo, you see that little pawn? That means he's a staff member. He's actually a really strong player, and we didn't even know it when we hired him. He's like 2,000 strength. I don't know where his blitz rating has fallen down, but Rodrigo is is uh, one of the Chess TV group's best chances to strike an upset. I'm going to pick Rodrigo in this game to win, not just because he works for us. 
Uh, so Rodrigo is a super talented developer, de does a lot of cool things at chesskid.com, and he's also a pretty decent chess player. Uh, okay, there's a couple different approaches here for black. Black can play queen to d7, and then try to drive the battery of the queen and bishop to the king side. This plan can be overrated. For those of you, okay, Rodrigo goes for it, but for those of you who fall in love with this idea every time and just assume, like Bobby Fischer, if you put the bishop here... You know, like, you just assume that they're always going to cooperate with your plan, and they're just going to take everything and then let you checkmate them. First of all, I envy you, because I wish I lived in that same blissful world as you. That's not going to happen every time, all right? When someone goes for bishop h3, the most likely result is they just ignore it, forcing you to... Uh, so instead of doing that, they, you know, they, they, they launch their center plan. And if you capture, of course, the king, the king sort of replaces the bishop in regards to protecting these critical squares. So um, you have to be careful not to fall in love with this idea of, of the removal of the Fianchetto bishop. What makes the Yugoslav attack for white different is it's combined with this rook still being on the h-file, and so you can drive the pawn and force open the h-file. That, that adds a new element that makes white's defensive tasks on the king side much more difficult so just you know keep that in mind don't don't fall in love with this idea i i know why rodrigo's going for it um probably it's still the best move here anyway if i had to make the guess yeah if i make a the guess i make a the guess. what am i italian and russian here like hey you know, spaghetti you meet the bull uh yeah uh this one with the bishop uh uh I don't know what I'm doing. But I think bishop h3 is still the best for Rodrigo. So the other way he can now stay with me here. I know you're thinking this is a little crazy. Not just the accents, but follow this idea. What if black, I'm just saying, goes all in? Like like with this idea where the rook just lifts up and just says, I'm going to go checkmate you. Terrible idea, right? Now, certainly you would never do this and give up your bishop. I was just trying to highlight the plan. In fact, I'll use a cool new way to highlight the plan. Uh, wait, with blue. Um, but white can't go for b4 anyway, because obviously black can just capture and capture. So uh, that's not exactly, or even take with the knight. That's not exactly what black's doing anyway, but I'm just highlighting that if, if white sort of sits tight and doesn't think there's any a chance for an attack, maybe that's not exactly true, right? Maybe we get this, uh, this blue... Or uh, what is the, what is the oh green green's a cool color too in case you're wondering, um, we'll see where that goes. What happened in the match between Smarter Chess and Ninja Kiwi? I'm gonna check the results, assuming that obviously Smarter Chess probably went on to win that game. Indeed he did, indeed he did, which puts the Pro Chess League in the driver's seat with the score of 2016. But honestly, like not that far. I mean, this is a much closer match than I thought. 20 to 16. Who are the heroes for Chess TV? Doting Donkey. The Doting Donkey sweeps Cram BB61. Look at that sexiness. The Doting Donkey pulls the upset and goes double mint gum on Cram BB61. Is that another name for a future droid on Star Wars? I don't know, but maybe consider changing it after that shellacking. Uh, Lord Osriel did not do his job against Lord Axe. Look at the Lords facing off, right? Let's get a Duke in there. And maybe, you know, a king, and we've got a full round table. Um, so we've got some fun going on here. Hack lover, hashtag what? Hack lover for Chess TV takes down a bunch of consonants that nobody wants to pronounce. That is so sweet. So, the, so some big upsets for the Chess TV group have kept them in this match. That makes me excited to follow it down the stretch. Let's... Let's keep going here, but let's keep the standings in view so we know what's going to happen here. Um, let's, uh, thank you, Ham Viking. You like my crazy style a little better than my, you know, the Pro Chess League, the event itself is what matters. And so I don't like being totally nuts uh, because then I get a lot of haters on Twitter like, dude, you're stupid. Uh, but um, this is the real me. Hashtag no holds bar. No artificial stimulants either, unless you count caffeine. You guys got one of these Mr. Coffee desk heaters? Let's see if I can put on camera. Oh, crap. I knocked over everything. Ugh, idiot. <sighs> Deal with it later. Um, so, uh, Mr. Coffee desk heaters, so you can talk a mile a minute and your coffee's still warm. 
I, I don't better invention not that I'm aware of um, okay smarter chess has prepared a trick and the miss that yeah knight to b5 is a coming from ninja kiwi warrior ninja kiwi does not see the trick coming everybody's a pawn is a pin yeah smarter chess is gonna play knight b5 and after queen here there's a number of things that are going to get nasty here for, for black. If if Matt Jensen is smart, he's going to play bishop a5. Ignore it. Just leave the tension, baby. Just ease in the tension, baby. Hashtag happy Gilmore reference he didn't see coming. Knight takes a7 check is now a threat. So if black moves, we've got removal of the defender tactics. The knight is falling. Uh, so this is, this is a very uh, tough position currently for the... Uh, for the Ninja Warrior, formerly known as Ninja Kiwi. Bishop A5 is just is just sassyville. No reason for, for Smarter Chess to take here because the Bishop here is not as valuable in this position as building up on the attack. Oh, man. Darn it. Darn it, Chess TV. All right, how's Queen Sheba doing? How's she doing? Queen Sheba, let's keep the standings up. Queen Sheba, if you can strike back, there's still a chance. It's 21 to 18. Come on, Queen Sheba. You're white, though I do like Dreaming Fly's position. I, I wouldn't lie to you. I might offend you, but I wouldn't lie to you. Um, so this is an isolated pawn position, kind of like I was just talking about, right? Like you get an IQP here. And superficially, you like white's pieces being placed to potentially control it. But usually the best isolated pawn has has given has given activity to the to the pieces and open files around it, right? Because by definition, an isolated pawn means there's no pawns on these files. I'm guessing this rook got here either the A file or the C file. So it feels like Black's pressure is really getting out of control in this situation. Now, what what Dreaming Fly would really love is to somehow remove this pony so he could punch the move D4 through. How sassy would that be to open up the battery? Queen and Bishop. Let's use blue to highlight the bejesus out of that. If it, I, I, I will, I will. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we like we like Dreaming Fly's chances. Unfortunately, the the match score remains twenty one eighteen. So who are some others we could jump into? How's our boy doing? How, oh, Rodrigo, say what? Rodrigo is on his way all day, all day, baby. Of course I'm not only reading chess.com TV. You haven't been saying anything, millennial. That sounds like exactly the kind of thing a millennial would say, assuming that I'm neglecting you instead of whether you're doing your job. Get it together, millennial. I don't know why I just went on that rant, but um, but there you have it. Um, I'm following I'm following the, uh, the, the chat. Going to get crushed by Ginger, millennial? Okay. How about you check our lifetime score, buddy, before you start dishing out insults in the Twitch chat. Go back to the playground. Um... The uh, let's see what else is going on here. I think Rodrigo's on his way to doing some good stuff here. I really do. What's up, FC Bremer? What's up, dog? Um, I'm always reading both chats, I'm everywhere at once and nowhere at the same time. Batman, <sighs> right? What, what would Batman say about that? I'm everywhere and nowhere. Chess.com needs a hero. And that hero is not me. Gotham needs a hero. Halvard and Hacklover, you guys were heroes for the Chess TV group. Hacklover, you went 2-0, dog. Way to drop it like it was hot. That was delicioso by you, man. Queen Sheba Drew? Okay, so not the worst result, right? I mean, I think she was worse there. But I think, I feel like Dreaming Fly kind of knew he was in the driver's seat. So maybe he just sort of took a draw. It's possible. Wow, that game with Tev Dor and Minute was not their second game. So they just finished. So what happened in that game? Okay, wait. Oh no, I was following Tev Dor. That was his second game. Monster Chess took both wins, which moved Chess TV even closer. Uh, yes, please. So I'm gonna get rid of Tev Dor's game. That's no longer a part of the uh, the battle match. Um. But okay, this is a this is a closer match than you would think, right? Three point game, three point swing. How many matches are left? We've got one with Czech Talon. We've got Rodrigo, our boy, gonna win his black here, and then we've got uh, Ninja Kiwi and Smarter Chess. I feel like Rodrigo 
is in the driver's seat, despite the weaknesses here, yeah? The put the bishop here, defends the pawn, free your back rank, yeah? So no checkmate happening here, and the bring the king out, yeah? Bring him out here, and now, you know? Uh, so, Rodrigo, I, I'm, I'm rooting for you, buddy. Uh, but Ninja Kiwi may have... Whoa, he's holding on. I do not think Smarter Chess played this the best way possible. Hello, McFly. After knight to b5, what did he do? Okay, he played bishop a5. I agree with that. But he couldn't deliver the goods in this position? I'm shocked. I'm shocked that there's nothing powerful here for white. That is unbelievable. Wow, am I just wrong about that? Maybe maybe Ninja Kiwi defended like a like a g6. Fly like a g6, defend like a g6. I don't see a knockout. There's no way to just start sack sack mate, right? So so smarter chess settles on the bishop pair, but then comes back to d2, which just feels wrong. I mean, the game is headed in a direction where black is getting the initiative. The e3 pawn is a target. The e4 square is open. Um interesting if i was if i was white maybe i still try to focus on maybe move the queen over and try to run the b pawn that's an idea um oops but suddenly the tables are turning matt jensen is under pressure this could be the biggest win for the chess tv group since the invention of the club itself ninja kiwi could be on the way this is basically his audition for american ninja warrior I mean, let's be honest. Ninja Kiwi is is on his way to to um, to saving the day for the Chess TV group. Unfortunately, it may not be enough. But if Ninja Kiwi and Rodrigo both get wins, right? I mean, that 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 pulls the total score much closer than I thought it would be. How's Rodrigo holding up here? Uh, okay, so. I gotta admit, his advantage isn't as big as I thought it would be before. But I, I still feel like if Black can. Get a little bit of a bind here. Um, but where's the progress? Like, right, where's the plan for black? I don't know. This rook on c6 is really, really irritating. Hitting everybody. Um, okay, so maybe g6, h6, g5, trade, trade. But there's this one, the f4 one, right? We open up the b shop. We create opportunities for our rooks. What, yeah. Yeah, file. Hey. Right? I like this one. So that's what I want. We'll see if Rodrigo finds this plan. How's Ninja doing? Ninja Kiwi is bringing the hurt against Smarter Chess right now as we speak. He is bringing down the hammer. I think I think uh, Smarter Chess's plan to retreat the bishop and not continue the assault of the pawns was not so smart. Hashtag cheesy line. Hashtag you get it. Uh, what's going on, everybody? Haven't looked at the chat for a while. Um, Camter and Chess TV says his DeLorean is still chugging along. Spuds, I guess, says, please, Daniel, I have time like all day, every day to play for chess.com in this type of tournament. Well, you should have been in the tournament, Spuds upset. Now you know that the club battles are be going down, yo. Club battles be going down. So now you know you need to go get in the club. And tell us which club you want to play. It's too late to join. For those of you now jumping in the Chess TV chat and asking. Um, uh, Leonid, thanks for the compliments, buddy. We love you. We love Chess.com. We love you. Thanks for the compliments. What's going on in Twitch? Millennials back. Uh, millennials back dishing out the insults. Like a good millennial. You know, tearing down others while lacking execution in his own life. Likely. Likely. Um, and, uh, you know, throwing out the insults. I love it. Maybe Millennial will be on Simon's team when we take down the Ginger, the Ginger GM. Um, you must, you like my hair today. I appreciate it. I shaved, in case you're wondering. Clearly. Clearly I shaved, yeah. What's up, DFIH? Everybody saying hi in the chat. Let's focus on the chess here. No more, no more chat interaction, because the match is getting close. No! Pro Chess League is pulling away, even with Ninja Kiwi's solid performance against Mr. Jensen right now. Ninja Kiwi owns the H-File, and if I had to guess, Chekalina Lashlamba is about to come over here. Check, followed by Rook D2 Mate. I think Mr. Jensen's going down. Um, 
<laughs> millennial loves it. Nothing like the good banter in the afternoon. It's true. I do like millennial. There's something about someone who just directly takes me on in chat, and like I just I love that. And I know, you know, I I know I like to dish it out because I just I think over time I've cared less and less about whether it's actually the appropriate thing to say, and I just like say what I think or feel, you know. Um, I'm seeing the therapist about it. Okay, so Rodrigo continues to try to grind it out. I do like Rook G4. If he can play Rook to E4, look at this. Let me just throw something your way, right? Chew on this. If he gets Rook E4, he's threatening Rook C4, which finally gets rid of all these shenanigans and gives him a chance. And by the way, F3 not possible because you can take with check, right? As far as I can see. So... Okay, Rodrigo does not go for this. He brings the Rook on G back to E, which maybe time pressure is starting to play a part here. It's possible. Rodrigo, though, we need you, bro. We need you, bro Chachsky. bro Braham Lincoln, bro Tato Chip, Brohemian Rhapsody, um, bro, um, bro Mato, like Tomato, but without the T, bro, um, we need you, bro. We need you, Rodrigo. Okay, G5. Don't don't allow any of that open file stuff. Yeah, G5. Now, now you can actually come back and organize F4. H5 was a mistake. You see, one of the biggest things holding back Black from playing G5 was that White could take it and then instantly get the H file going. So with White playing H5, G5, now Black can come back and focus on this F4 plan we were highlighting to punch it through and open up counterplay. I me mean, like it, right? I me mean, like it. Play, okay, Rodrigo, what are you doing, bro? Why is it? Okay, he's going for this plan now. Maybe better late than never, but I'm just not, not sure it's necessary anymore. Playing F4. Okay, was it possible right away? I guess not, because if F4, he was going to take it and then go to pin town. Hashtag irritating. But, but Rodrigo's got some ideas going. Oh my gosh, what a nice tactic. SJFG. He sees the idea of rook c4, and he eliminates rook takes f3. SJFG wins the match for the Pro Chess League with this combination. He eliminates the tactic, forks the rooks. Rodrigo, my boy, as much as I love him, he is going down in this game. And you know what? I didn't see that idea coming on Rook E4 either. Moving the rooks over and going for F4 were Black's last chance. But as it turns out, not quite enough. Down to a single second on the clock and losing to boot. Rodrigo goes down with it. If we move back over to the standings, it looks like we are headed toward a victory for the Pro Chess League. Now up 26-22. Is that it? Is that is that is that what Seabiscuit wrote, starring T Toby Maguire? Is that is that the Seabiscuit? Is that it? Victory 26-22? Is that um, possibly? Yeah. Okay, there's still a couple more games going. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, uh, Mr. Al Hous is going to win as white. Um, I think that, that that helps the yeah helps Chess TV a little bit. Like I was about there they go they got a one point. Eric Helsingborg is that a made up name, or am I happy to see it? Come on, Eric Helsingborg and Daily Puzzle. Okay, Daily Puzzle is our last chance. Daily Puzzle's going to get a win. Daily Puzzle's going to get a win, but he's currently working the pre-move. He's currently working the pre-move. Wait. There's no increment in this? What? There's no increment. Daily Puzzle down to the final seconds. Is he going to mate? I'm not watching it. I, I got to see. Is he going to mate? Is he, no, he didn't do it. Ah! Daily Puzzle draws. Oh, man. Oh, man. And with it, the Pro Chess League wins the medal. 26 and a half, 23 and a half. That was fun, actually. That was actually more fun than I thought it would be, partly because the Pro Chess League um, didn't, didn't dominate the match, right? It was a much closer match than we thought it would be. 
Uh, apologies for everybody. My my fault on the board. It was it's hard. I got a million things going. I, I didn't I didn't realize which scene I was showing to the to the viewers. Um, but okay. In the end, it's the Pro Chess League who takes the victory with a big old a big old three point swing. A much closer match than I thought. Um, really, it could have been a two point victory if if Daily Puzzle finds a way to convert on this one. Um, and, uh, you know, that was fun. That was a close match. Let's take a look at the big standings in the end. Um, just to say once again that, uh, we had, we had, uh, some really, we had some fun, fun players in the match. Only a couple title players. Do not expect this to be the last club battles. This was a lot of fun. Uh, we will be doing this. Who knows? If it's a hit, maybe we'll do it once a week. Right now, the plan is once a month. Let me let me hit up the ginger, the G money on Skype. He's probably we were gonna do a chess rivals today. Let me see if Simon is uh, let me chat it up with Simon and see if we can get a, a big old match scheduled. Um, mono e mono team club team versus club bragging rights around for everybody. Right, choose your side, pick your poison. Obnoxious American, devilishly handsome ginger. Uh, you know. Englishman, obviously the choice is clear. Um, pure Defiance, you love it. Thanks for the feedback. Let us know what you like, everybody. Let us know if there's a club. What are we going to do? Should we have a shedge? Should we set a shedge? Let's, shed a, let's set a shedge. Let's set a schedule. Let's get people signing up for these club shows. Let's, let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's let the people decide, right? Let the people decide. Let them, let them play, let them play, let them play, let them play. I got to pick up the office stuff when I knocked over Mr. Coffee. Anyway, um, yeah, we can do Europe versus USA. We can do old versus young. You know, we can get, you know, we can do um, sinners versus saints, right? Country versus R&B. Uh, you know, you can, you know, we obviously, we're going to make a lot of improvements here. After this show today, I've got some requests, um, to how to make this experience a slightly cleaner one, right? For all the fans out there, we're going to work on that. We'll get back to you right in a jiffy. Um, thanks everybody for being here. Please, uh, go, go follow me on Twitter. Go follow chess.com on Twitter. We're doing more and more tweets. That's what the kids are into and let you know when we do these kind of things last second. If you were following me on Twitter, you would have known about this today. Um... Thank you for all the fans in the Chess.com TV chat. Zaskar, uh, Phil, Horton, uh, Queen Sheba. Um, uh, Queen Sheba lies about her age anyway. LOL. Hashtag LOL. Um, it's funny. Thanks for all the Twitchers uh, for being here. Love, love the chatters on the Twitch. Um, Uh, Pure Defiance says, long time no see. I see your wrinkles are slowly changing. I'm getting old. You know what? Don't fight your age. If you ever see me, like, you know, if you, it's like, what's worse than watching somebody, like, fight their age, right? I mean, you just got to age. You just got to age and then die. It happens, right? Taxes and death. People deal with it. Um, but, uh, of, course I'm, I've, uh, of course, I'm getting all wrinkly. Thanks, everybody, for being here. And uh, we will we will talk to you later. Uh, nice little fresh haircut. Thanks you. Thank you very much. Go join one of these clubs. Get some title players in your club. Now you have motivation to make sure your club can kick some A, man. And ladies. All right, everybody. Peace out. Again, reminder, congratulations, of course, to the winners of the Pro Chess League of the first ever club battles. Thank you for being here. We'll see you later on chess.com. Peace out.